Welcome back to the Caregiver Minute, where every weekday family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. It goes without saying that our world is increasingly stressful, and that's having a toll on people. It's one of the factors leading to increased heart disease and neurodegenerative diseases and depression and anxiety and other mental health challenges. One of the reasons why is that stress impairs mitochondrial functioning. The mitochondria, traditionally viewed as our energy producers, actually do a lot more than just produce energy. They're also switches for our immune system in a way. Now this is an area of pretty recent research, but going back to about 2014, researchers were starting to discover that mitochondria help to turn our immune system on and off. So one of the keys to being resilient in the modern world is improving mitochondrial health and eliminating as many stressors as we can. Stress comes in many forms. There are chemical stressors, like the herbicides and pesticides and plastics and pollutants that are in so many areas where people live these days. To the extent that we can reduce those, I think we should. If we can eliminate some of the exposures that we have, then our bodies are not under as much oxidative stress. Eating a really high carbohydrate diet and driving up metabolic health problems is a massive stressor, not only on our bodies in general, but on the mitochondria specifically. In fact, one area of current research has to do with improving mitochondrial functioning by using very low carbohydrate, even ketogenic diets. Another stressor on all of us is lack of physical activity which is an interesting one because it's kind of paradoxical. Physical activity itself is a stressor on the body, and you can overtrain. But you also need to have a modest amount of stress on the body to stimulate better mitochondrial functioning and higher energy output. One really controllable form of stress that often we don't think about is the constant barrage of negative information that's coming our way. There's all kinds of horrible news reports on a consistent basis, and a lot of people call it fear porn. I think that's a great term for it because it's addictive, and it rattles the human cage in a way that becomes really compelling. Human beings are kind of hardwired to pay more attention to really negative things than to the more positive things. If you give people an opportunity to hear some bad news, a lot of people want to hear it. They want to know what horrible thing is going on so that they're informed. And every place from the evening news to podcasters and all sorts of social media influencers leverage that fact and just spew out all kinds of negativity on a regular basis. That is a form of stress that we can intentionally avoid. Some years ago, I read a book by Stephen Sample, who was the president of USC. It's called The Contrarian's Guide to Leadership. And in it, he talked about deciding to go away from watching news media of all kinds and reading newspapers and even reading magazines. He just got rid of all of that because he didn't want his thought patterns to be heavily influenced by other sources. He wanted to make up his own mind about things. And when I started to read that, I thought, Okay, well, how's this going to work? How else are you going to be informed if you don't read any of that stuff? Well, as part of his experiment of swearing off all of that, he decided to really pay attention to what other people were saying. And he noticed that if he was uninformed about a current event, it would come up in conversation. People would say, well, what do you think about the hijacking of this plane? And he'd say, oh, I hadn't heard about that yet. Tell me more. And by the time he had heard from a few people in his social circle whose biases he knew very well, he had a pretty rounded perspective of what was going on. When it came to knowing who to vote for, well, he was aware from people's conversation who was running. And by asking people their opinions and knowing their biases in advance, he was able to filter through their opinions and kind of merge things together to try to have a more 360 degree kind of view of each candidate and make up his own mind about who he was going to choose to vote for. I thought that was a really good strategy. It's actually something that I've tried in my own life, partly because I've become so busy, I just haven't had time to watch television or read a lot of newspapers for many years now. 
but other people tell me what's going on. And I have found much the same thing that Stephen Sample found. Well, I hope you'll take some time to consider what stressors you and the people that you're serving are facing and what things you can control. Are there exposures you could eliminate? Could you steer clear of media sources and all the fear that they stoke in our society and instead focus on things that you can really control in your life? Are there other steps that you could take to eliminate stressors so that you're more resilient in dealing with the challenges that maybe you can't get rid of? I hope that's helpful to you and to the people you serve, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another episode of the Caregiver Minute. 